It's the only wrestling podcast on earth with a former two-time MLB All-Star, one comeback player of the year. He's the head coach himself, Dimitri Young. Read the shirt. I hate you. I hate you. I don't even know you. And I hate your guts. And it keeps, uh, it's hard to tell. It says, I hope everything in life bad happens to you and only you and nobody else. This is Dave Chappelle, Dave Chappelle's character from the Player hey. Haters Ball. Hey, 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 hey. hey. <laughs> Love that show. Love that show. He is the inventor of the most overused wrestling move in history, who's now become transitional, not even a finisher. He's the two-time X Division champion. He also is the comeback player of the year because welcome back to wrestling, Petey Williams. How's she going, eh? And I'll, I'll this is this is our shirt, guys. I guess you could say it's collar and elbow. It says the X Files, the CSX CXE Files, however you want to say it. But you can find it on collar and elbow brand.com. Use the promo code WPP, um, and that's for us. And we also have our host. The director, the producer, call him what you want. The man behind it, the undisputed Dennis Farrell. Dennis, how you doing? I'm, I'm wearing this Detroit Tiger shirt, so it's not sexy or cool, guys. Sorry. It ain't. I can go. I can go shirtless if you need me to for this. No, no. Why don't you just inside out the Tiger shirt, but keep the shirt on? <laughs> you played for the Tigers, though. Oh, they kicked my ass out. So, <laughs> I mean. We won't do that to you here because we love you guys. WrestleMania weekend is come and gone. Uh, I want to spend this show just talking about the weekend in general. There was a lot of wrestling going on. Uh, first, as we kind of hinted to, Pete, you came back at Hardcore Justice. Let's talk a little bit about that because I don't know. I, I knew you were coming back. I don't know, Dimitri, did you know he was coming back? Uh, we talked about it before we went on air, so of course I did. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. I didn't know if if we were all in the know or not, but uh, let's talk about new ring gear. I don't like it, but... Uh, you know, I, I wanted to do something different, I guess. I, I didn't... Like, I've had the same gear for... Oh, when I transitioned into that uh, Maple Leaf muscle character in like 2008. And then uh, when I came back, and I wore that forever, and then I retired. And then when I came back in 2017, I wore it for a little bit. Got you know new ring gear made, same type of style with the flaps and you know the trunks and all that kind of stuff, just different design. Um, and then I, I thought, you know, next time back, what am I going to do? Like, I don't want to, you know, I started with the biker shorts. Actually, a long, long time ago, my first pair of wrestling trunks were like a. Uh, a long tights like crushed velvet just like plain black or something i didn't know what i was doing they weren't um, uh they weren't speedos were they no 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 so uh they, they were they were the long pants tights type deal uh so i i decided i'm like you know maybe i'll go back to the long pants i mean just to give it a shot like i mean it doesn't have to be that way but you know i could wear those for a while and um i just wanted to try something new i wasn't I wasn't set on like, you know, I got to stay on the, you know, the, the small tights or anything like that. It's just, it's not that I'm not working up my legs or hiding anything. I just, yeah, I want to do something new. Um, yeah. Your, your last set of gear. Can we talk about a little bit? And I was kind of shocked when you told me who made it for you. Oh yeah. It was uh Congo Kong, believe it or not. No the last that I had. Yeah. Yeah. So he, he um, does rain gear. That's what I said. So we were up in, uh, Oh, geez. We're at uh, Bound for Glory 2017 in Ottawa. And I was still wearing my my ones from like 2008. And even though in 2008, I had like three or four different pairs, I would just alternate them out. And like some of them were getting really ratty. I was like, like the destroyer part was falling off. And I'm like, oh, geez. And I asked, I don't remember who I asked, but I said, hey, where do you get your gear made from? That's how it always starts. Where do you get your gear made from? You know what the next question is, right? Like, oh, can you give me his number or whatever? And they <laughs> said, they, they would tell me, yeah, whoever or whatever. But he takes really long and they give you the whole thing. And they're like, you know what? Congo Kong does gear. And I'm like, get, 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 stop messing with me. Come on. Like, and there's like, no, seriously, he made these ones and they point it to him. And I'm like, 
man, those are nice. I'm like, that's some good stuff. So I, you know, I was, I said, Hey, can you make gear, get them ready for the next set of TVs? He's like, yeah, sure. You know, told me the price and I gave him an old set and came back to the next TVs. I'm like, sweet, this is it. Um, and he sent me pictures beforehand and stuff. And I, I gave him, I always give the art cause I'm not an artist when it comes to drawing or anything like that. So I said, it doesn't have to be identical to this, you know, just the flaps and stuff. Like you can make it your own, just have fun with it, you know, whatever. And that's what we came up with. Mm. I, 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 I think that story is great because that's kind of like you, Dimitri Congo Kong. Yeah. You wouldn't yeah, picture him in front of a sewing machine, right? <laughs> like a, in front of a sewing machine, big dude, right? The sewing machine probably looks like this big. Over there looking like a seamstress. Yeah, yeah, right. Like you would think, like he doesn't have that skill, but you know, he's like six foot six and like three hundred pounds. And you're thinking, and he plays that character where he doesn't talk at all or anything with the face paint and all. Like totally what I expect from somebody from Ring. You would think that somebody like me, I make Ring Gear. Absolutely not. Mm. <laughs> That's so true. Any any feedback on your new gear from any of the boys? Because, I mean, when they see you, they see you in the biker shorts. They see you in the Canadian Destroyer outfit. In wrestling, when you come out with something new, people notice, like, right away. Yeah. Um, so the the I, I knew I was coming back. Um, didn't know when because in January, back in December, when Damore contacted me, he said, uh, you ready to go, kid? And I said, oh, dude, I – gain the COVID-19 I'm not in any ring shape and uh he said well how long will you take like, can you get to get there and like I, I think it was like two or three weeks away and I'm like what no like I could get close and so January rolls around I didn't have any matches and I'm like okay I'll be ready for February and then February rolls around don't have any matches again and I'm like well all right I'm still still gonna be in shape and um you know, March, they put me in matches. And I think in the February set of TVs, or actually it was January, uh, Trey Miguel, he had a new set of, uh, a new set of gear. And, uh, I said, Hey, let me try those. on. like, who made those? I really like those. He told me, and I, I said, let me try them on. And that's how I always like measure my ring gear. Cause I don't know how to take measurements properly and send it back. Like my previous ring gear, my first ones, I just use Saban's tights and I gave them to his guy. I'm like, yep, yeah, use Saban's measurements. And with Trey, I put those on. I'm like, yep, use Trey's measurements. And they're they come up a little bit too much, whatever. He's a little bit taller than me. Um, but I mean, nobody said anything about feedback. Like all the guys said, like, oh, I like your gear, you know, like, but I don't know if they're being nice because, you know, I produce their matches and stuff and they want to be nice to me. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know how long I'm going to keep them for, but that's where we're at with the gear i'm wearing them and you're gonna see me again with them because i have another match coming up i won't give it away when um but you're gonna see him again nice i i'm not i'm not mad at that story by the way I, uh, as much as we promoted collar and elbow if you go over to pro wrestling tees right now search wrestling perspective as the banner says if you're listening on audio only go buy a t-shirt we got Four up right now. We'll be adding a bunch more throughout the month. So that, that's how you support the show. It's got the classic, uh, the NWO style WPP. We've got the I Stole the Canadian Destroyer shirt. <laughs> I mean, everybody's doing it. We might as well make a shirt. So yeah. uh, if you're yeah, listening. Yeah, bad Bunny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. If Bad Bunny ends up wearing it. And other people buy it, all his like whatever two million followers. That's gonna be some serious coin for us. <laughs> by the yeah, way, thank you, Pete. By the <laughs> way, I need to give Dimitri Young major props. I went back and listened to the preview show, and we all looked at Dimitri Young like he had a third head, like he was the craziest person in the world when he was like. Would it be funny if Bad Bunny did a Canadian Destroyer? We're all like, what are you talking about? He and, called it, man. and he even said, the Bunny Destroyer. That's what they call it. We're all <laughs> and and I, I remember making the face like, maybe I should fire him. Never let him back on the podcast again. Like, change all of our numbers and just, just leave him out hanging. And holy cow, was he right. So to be true. <laughs> 
I have to do that props. Hold on, let me do the Barry Horowitz real quick. Not, not only <laughs> called the spot, but you called the name that they were going to do it without <laughs> any of us even knowing it. So that you get the holy cow, I pulled that out of my ass award for, for this whole WrestleMania. Yeah, I don't want to pull anything out of my ass except turds, but yeah, thank you. <laughs> What what I liked about um, them naming it is I don't remember who was on commentary for that match. I'm assuming Corey Graves was Michael Cole. Um, I I don't know the commentary team. Obviously Booker T was the special uh, commentator for that match, and so he does it. And what I love this about wrestling because you know you got Corey Graves or whoever saying like, "Oh my God, what was that?" And it's like. Come on, man. Like, <laughs> don't insult everybody's intelligence. You know what it is. So Booker T, um, you know, probably so he doesn't feel stupid. Like, are you guys kidding me? Um, and he says, that was the bunny destroyer. And I'm like, there you go. There you go. So, uh, yeah, pretty cool. <laughs> pretty cool. And I know it was, you know, annoying Morrison, um, you know, and he's taken that move off the top from the Usos before. So I know. Uh, Morrison probably said, Hey, you're going to give me this move. And Bunny was like, Oh, no, no, okay. Like that kind of deal. And I got to give it to, to Miz and Morrison. They, they, I know when we did the preview show, we were all like that match, whatever, whatever, that kind of thing. Pretty hard. Yeah. yeah. It was a great match. It, it really was that, that we owe them an apology. Yes. We- yeah. And I, I mean, I wasn't expecting it to be a bad match. I just, I just didn't know what, you know, WWE was going to allow Bunny to do, like how, how far they were going to let him go, like how much trust they were going to put into Miz and Morrison. And it seems like they put all their trust in them. Like they're like, yep, okay, yeah, you guys can carry this guy through a match, no problem. And <sighs> it, it turned out like those, those, like you have to give it to Miz and Morrison, I, I feel more than anything, because they, they made him, he, he is a star, but they made him look like a, a wrestling star. And that's what it's that's what it's about. Before we get to that match, let's at least talk about the takeovers beforehand, which were phenomenal. Uh, once again, you can never go wrong with a takeover. Congratulations to our friend Karrion Cross or Killer Cross for becoming the NXT champion for a second time. Uh, I I sent him a text. I couldn't believe it. He replied twenty minutes later, and we talked. And I was just like, man. It's cool. And once again, every time we talk, he's like, you know, I wouldn't be here without you and Petey. <laughs> it blows my mind. <laughs> I, 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 I swear to God. It, 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 and it's so <clears throat> dumb, but it's so amazing how humbled he is that he, he still thanks us for that. Yeah, he he's uh, – And we told the story a million times on the podcast, but, I mean, we could tell it really quick to set it yeah. up. Yeah. I mean, Dimitri, I wish, you know, before he got signed, I wish he would have been, you were here with us when he's on the podcast and stuff. Uh, re- really good dude down to earth. You know, if he doesn't like something, he'll he'll let you know. And just, it, it's it, the big buildup for him at Impact. We did like a big whodunit and that, that was going to be the big reveal. And, uh, I, you know, I, I was the one that was going to be the guy that his first feud and, you know, he squashed me. It, it was It was great. I've never been squashed before. I think I got like three moves in. Um, I remember Dennis had a big, Dennis was almost the agent for that match. Even though like I was the agent, like he was the agent because when we're in the ring, I'm like, Hey, how does this look? And I don't, I don't usually do that for matches, but you know, I know that we're really, really they're like, this, this guy's going to be our guy. You know, we have to really make sure. So I, I put a, we Dennis put a lot of extra effort into it. And uh, I'm like, you know, how does this look? Oh no, Pete, you should do uh, like this instead. That looks better. Oh, you know, great idea. And even naming, his his finishing move uh the cross jacket that was all dennis yeah uh and they loved it and yeah i think we had a list of like Ten we days. almost glasgow smile was maybe glasgow one of them kiss. glasgow kiss was that what it was okay. yes that was before uh drew mcintyre started using a move called that too oh and- yeah, see he's probably yeah. listening to us or maybe he uh whatever he probably um, hey, hey drew um, but that, that was the good. The bad with the killer cross was, you know, he just wasn't happy with impact and he came on and, it, you know, kind of aired his grievances. And then that was that. I still remember the, at least the two, two things I, I, I said, you guys should do different and you did do different and it came out phenomenal. And the match was one, he, he, he went to punch you 
and like caught you with it? No, I went to go forearm him, and then he caught it in between his yeah. neck. Never, never seen that done before. Yeah, and and I said, Damn. I said, why doesn't he just catch you? Mm-hmm. And then you try to yank your arm out because I think it wasn't. I think you were just going to hit him a few times, and nothing was going to happen. I said, just have him hold it there, and you can't get your arm out. And you're like, oh, that's a good one. And then it was uh, towards the end of the match. I I said, hey. Why don't he beg you to give him the Canadian destroyer? And then yeah, yeah. And he's like, Come on, come on. And he bends down and you crawl up because you're beat up this whole match. You you lock it in, and then he just lifts you up very slowly and deliberately. And those got, are good, yeah, good cameras angles on that too. Yeah, that was I had nothing um, to do with the camera angle. I'll be honest on that. Well, Actually, guys, I'm a free agent. <laughs> But, but uh, that's our killer cross. So congratulations to him once again. You know, came back from his injury, and you know, uh, him and Scarlett are 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 doing great up there. It seems. Yeah, ph- ph- phenomenal match. The whole uh, any any thoughts for you guys, real quick, and take over before we skip over and hit the big show. I like the first night with uh, Raquel Gonzalez um, winning uh, against um, Io Shirai. That was a hell of a match, and yep. then. Just seeing how humble she was, because you know, granted, we know it's you know it's predetermined and things of that nature, but the excitement that you see from the people that win the titles and stuff, <clears throat> you know, I even get choked up because I know it's a long journey, and when you get the call like, "Hey, you're gonna be the the person," and then when they actually achieve it, like when we talk about WrestleMania, we're gonna be talking about a whole lot of that because I saw a lot of it and. Then on Tuesday, watching NXT, I know I'm skipping ahead, but when they had Raquel Gonzalez and then Rhea Ripley came out and then Bianca Belair came out, <clears throat> they all held up the bats and they, the belts and they had a picture of them before, just all three of them, just young and hungry, and then they're all champion. To me, that, that brought tears to my eyes, just knowing how excited it is for them to be able to become champions. No, that, that, that's that's one thing. And the, one, the one thing that I really like too, I like seeing guys, uh, you know, like MSK, like that match right there. Um, knowing those guys. Yeah, n- knowing those guys, what they've been through. Like I, you know, like I, I don't know what they're calling them, like Nash and Desmond Wesley. Xavier and, and Zachary Wentz. And, and Two of Wesley, the yeah. names around. It, it's it's pretty generic. I, I know them obviously as Desmond Xavier and, and, and Zachary Wentz. So um, part of the Rascals. Uh, but it, those guys just seeing him, I remember like Desmond Xavier when I first came back in 2017. Um, the the actually Sanjay was was right in the show, and he had pitched that when I come back, I take Desmond Xavier under my wing. They were gonna make me a heel, and you know, eventually, you know, how it always goes when you have a trainer and a trainee, they turn on or one of them turns on the other and then they have a match. That's what it was gonna be. They were really high on Des at that time. Uh that never came to fruition. And then I remember Zachary Wentz, you know, he was um, there. And I, I, I want to say I first met him at uh, Tommy Dreamer show, uh, House of Hardcore. And um, I don't remember who was pushing for him to be in the match. Uh, it was a four-way match. We had uh, Bobby Fish from, you know, NXT and myself. And I want to say like, I want to say like maybe M-Dog was in there. So maybe it wasn't M-Dog. I don't remember, but he was going to be our fourth man in the match. And I, I really enjoyed working with him. And then I saw him at the impact tapings like a month later. And he didn't like, I think he just had a squash match where he got squashed by uh, OV. And, but we, we had, we needed somebody to play suicide. And I said, Hey man, you should let this, this Zachary Wentz guy play suicide. He's really good. Like I'll put my stamp of approval on him if anything goes wrong. And they let him play suicide and, you know, they, they loved them and it was, you know, all, I guess, uphill, downhill, whatever you want to call it. It was good for them. Yeah. It, it, on the flip side, talking about emotion, and I think we talked about this one time, Pete, in the very early days of the wrestling perspective. I, you know, you, you had emotions once when you were actually fired. Yeah, yeah right. When you were actually <laughs> fired from uh, Impact. And it turned out to actually be you being fired. And you guys can actually search the clip. Go search, you know, Petey Williams fired. Was it Feast or Famine, I believe? Or- uh, sure. 
What? No, uh, I, I don't know what it was called. Uh, Blue Money was doing a gimmick where if you lost the match, then you know you're fired. I maybe it was Feast or Famine. I'll say yes, Dennis. Yes, I, I don't remember if it was. It was one of those tag matches because it was you and Eric Young. Eric Young versus Beer Money, right? Yeah, Bobby Roode and James Storm, and it's just it's so so interesting because I started my career pretty much Team Canada, and uh, even though it was the second Team Canada, t- Team Canada 2.0, it was with Bobby and Eric, and my last match was also with them. And you know, I got the call. I, I don't know if I've told this story on the podcast before. Years. Okay, so you know, it, my my contract's coming up, and. Uh, you know, at the time I was doing the Scott Steiner gimmick and then they wrote me off TV to do the main event mafia thing where, where uh, Scotty wasn't back yet, but main event mafia, you know, beat me up and left me bloody and stuff. And yeah, I thought they were just going to write me off for the rest of my contract since it was kind of, kind of up. Uh, so I was ready for that. But then uh, they, they had me come back in, in the main event match. Like Mick Foley was the guest referee against the, uh, you know, Steiner and, and and AJ and they had AJ give me a big hug afterwards. And that's when we formed the front line and all that kind of stuff. So I'm like, Oh, okay, well maybe they are doing something <laughs> with me. And then pretty much like the, the next day, Terry Taylor came up to me and he said, Hey, we want to resign you. And you know, so we, we talked about that for a second and then he turned to Alex Shelley and said, yeah, we want to resign you too. And, uh, and then negotiations were going good. They were talking to my agent and everything. And then all of a sudden out of the blue, probably in like February before our February TV tapings. So a couple months after the fact, uh, I got a call from Taylor Taylor and just said, Hey, um, you know, we're, we're not going to re- renew your contract. And I said, whoa, 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 what? Like, it was just odd that they said they wanted to renew it and then not. It's just, it, it, it seemed kind of weird. Like I could have been looking for other things than, you know, putting everything. So, you know, he just, he said, we'll pay out the rest of your contract. So it expired in March. Uh, you could sit at home and just, you know, this is the angle we're doing. He told me about the angle and he said, we just ask that, you know, you don't tell anybody until, you know, it happens. And I'm like, okay, so I don't tell anybody. And then the day comes up and, you know, we had a pay-per-view, then two TV tapings. I did a pay-per-view, lost to Steiner, did TV taping, lost to Steiner. And then the next night was that that match and when we're calling the match you know it's kind of tough because i'm getting choked up like you know you're just knowing it's your last match in in the company and nobody knew and i i knew like eric and bobby were like what's what's up with pd why isn't he why isn't he feeling this he's all about putting ideas in and stuff like that and i said hey guys i throughout the day bobby was like hey are they this is how it came out. I said, are they just giving you a new gimmick or something? Taking this, the Steiner look off you. And I said, no, I'm done after today. And he, he was like, you know, shut the F up. Like, come on, what, what are they doing for real? Like he thought I was joking. And I said, no, I'm, I'm literally done. And I told him about the conversation and he couldn't believe it. And then I'm, you know, I, I tell the rest of the guys in the match, I said, this is what's going on. And they j- just, so they know if my head wasn't in the right spot, you know, if I was, I was missing cues in the ring or whatever. So they knew, you know, and then, um, then, you know, right before the match, I, I start telling people cause they're like, Hey, what's going Cause they were starting to ask like, Hey, what wh- are like, are they doing a gimmick where you get fired? Like, I, I, and I'm like, no, I'm done. And nobody believed me. Everybody thought I was like, this was a big work. Like I'm working the boys or something like that. And I said, no, this is legit real. Like my contract's up and they're not resigned. Like that's just the way it's, it's going to go. And so, you know, I do the match and, you know, I'm getting emotional before the match and Terry Taylor talks to me before the match. And he's, he even says to me, he's like, you know, cause I'm, I'm kind of getting teared up about it. I, you know, like I, I've worked there forever. And then, and he goes, Hey man, after the match, you know, if you, if you need to say something on the mic, if you need to well, like, whatever, man, just, you know, just, just let it all come out. And I'm like, we can edit you out later. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I'm like, all right. So I go out there, I have the match, you know, you saw what happened and stuff, very emotional and stuff. And even when Bobby was pinning me, you know, he's like, you know, you, you know, we, we talked, you can kind of see sometimes like, you know, when we bury our head to say thank you and stuff, but he just goes as he's pinning me, you know, he's like, I love you, Petey. And then, you know, that was that. And they have to pretend like they're all happy and they go to the back and, um, 
you could tell something was up because they got out of there real quick and that that looked like it was rough for them like every you know yeah and, and this is how i knew like it, sometimes you don't realize like you know you're with the, you're with these guys they're like your family like every every week you know we're filming and we're, we're touring for multiple days in a row we're going overseas we're we're rooming together we're driving together eating together everything and you don't realize how much people care about you until you know when it comes time to say goodbye so i, I wasn't expecting this but you know i i walk out of the ring i go up the ramp say goodbye and then i walk through the curtain and i just see like almost the whole locker room there and you know they just start clapping i wasn't expecting it it actually brought more emotion out of me and uh you know like even aj like i i i've never seen aj cry before you know and he gives me a big hug and even you know bob Ryder, you know you know rest his soul like he, he was an emotional wreck and i'm like I, I didn't even realize like how like the impact you know i that i had on them i guess like that where it's like wait well, hey, you know, i'm gone i'm gonna miss them you, you don't realize that so that was a that was a really tough day and uh you know jeff jarrett avoiding me all day and i, I he, he probably thought i was gonna like beg for my job back or something like that but you know i stopped him and uh and this is before the match and i said hey jeff he's like what's up Petey? and i'm like you could tell he doesn't want like he's avoiding it right and I said, hey, I just want to say, you know, thank you for the opportunity over the years. He's like, yeah, sh you didn't get my text. And I'm like, <laughs> I try not to laugh, right? Because I'm like, okay. <laughs> and uh, I just go, I said, ah, no, I, you know, I'll have to check my phone again. Like, fuck, of course, I, I would I would know if I, <laughs> I got a text. Um, so, you know, that was that. And then I remember seeing Jeff. I immediately went back to the hotel. I shaved all my blonde hair and my blonde goatee because now I didn't have to walk around in public like that anymore. <laughs> and uh, you know, Jeff saw me at, you know, the bar afterwards. And he was like, oh, man, you couldn't wait to get rid of that hair, could you? Um, I'm like, yeah, yeah. And that was it. That, that was my run with Impact the first time. So, yeah, I get the emotions. Uh, those emotions that you see at WrestleMania are are very real. Um, you know, And I've, I've had an emotional one, too. Like my first match with AJ Styles uh, at Victory Road, the, the one that, you know, everybody saw the Canadian Destroyer like off the off the second and stuff uh we get to the back and i don't know why i got emotional like it was just because like i was with the and 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 johnny divine and eric young and bobby and then we're just hugging and then you know me and scott are crying for whatever reason like it's just it's very emotional that we this is our first big pay-per-view and we made it to the top of that mountain that we we strive so hard to to get to and even bobby called us assholes because he's like you guys are assholes you're, gonna, you're just gonna make me cry you know and he had he had to walk away um so i get those emotions uh, i'm sure you know dimitri you know when, when in it like it, it's hard to explain and you don't know how it overcomes you you're like i'm not gonna cry i'm not gonna cry and then it happens <laughs> and it, you know you feel like a, a pansy but um <laughs> it's very it's very real and I, I, I'm not to be funny, but I'm sitting here and I've heard the story before and it makes me kind of get emotional too. I don't know about you, Dimitri. No, I, I definitely understand what, what Petey's going through is like the last go around and you know, you're out of there. Everybody knows you're gone. And you don't like Petey was saying, you don't know the impact of what, you, you know, the relationship you have with people until it's time to say goodbye. And when you have people like hugging you and like wishing you well, and, and then like you was also talking about avoidance, you know, because in a sense, can't deal with the emotions. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so that just, that just proves how good of a person you are when it's like that instead of, Oh, Petey's gone. Oh shit. About time that fucker left. That, thank God. Right. <laughs> it, that, that was like, that, that was a lot different. Those two emotions that I just explained, was a lot different than when I had my retirement match. Uh, like it was locally in the Detroit area against Chris Saban. That's when I decided, like, hey, this is it. You know, it was like July third of like 2014, or maybe it was July fifth, and I didn't have the same emotion. You know, I, I, my my wife at the time she was pregnant with our firstborn, and she even came in. The, I just I didn't have the same emotion. Like it's almost like I was ready. Like because I, I I left on my own terms. I was ready to leave, and with impact 
when I left impact, I wasn't ready to leave. So that, that was, that was a lot tougher. Um, so th there's different types of emotions and it's, I, I get what everybody was feeling at wrestling. I've never been to WrestleMania, but I get that emotion where you've that, that accomplishment and like everything you work for in your life, you it's wow. Like it's there. It's, it's hard to put into words. Well, let's, let's talk a little WrestleMania here. And for me, what may listen, we all, I was, I think a little more excited than everybody else going into it. It, it. Night one exceeded, I think all of our expectations, but for me, what really gave it that big show feel was that rain delay that made it. Feel, oh, yes. that, you know what? It, I was kind of room for it. Cause I'm like, this kind of will make it feel like a real sporting event. And the first few matches, if you look closely, you could see the rain coming down. I thought, this really adds a dimension to the show that I didn't know I needed until I actually got it. And they did a great job of covering up for that, what, 20, 30 minutes that they had to? Yeah, that was like a actual baseball rain delay where they were finding people to interview and stuff. And, and I, was, I just got back from our game and stuff, and I was fixing something to eat and realized that, Hold on, it's 5.15 here, and there's no matches yet. And then I'm just listening to everybody talk, and they pretty much – they did a great job of pushing it along and kind of taking your mind off of, okay, it's raining here. There's fans here. It did feel like a, a big game feel. So you're right about that, Dennis. It, it reminds me of uh, – we had a, a delay at Impact – um, back in probably, I think it was like 2005. It was, it was in our early, early impact days at Universal Studios. And uh, the roof got set on fire. Uh, do you guys remember this? No. Okay. Oh, so wow. the match, I think it might have been the first match. And the opening pyro, back when power was the big thing in wrestling, uh, went off. And uh, Eric Young versus Johnny Devine was in the ring. And it, it, man, it just started getting really smoky in there and stuff, and they had to use the fire extinguisher, and then all that. I don't know if it's like CO two or whatever it is comes down, and you know, they had to, you know, pretty much take it home, evacuate the building. This is live pay per view, okay? Like, I mean, there's only a certain amount of time you can use on pay per view. If you go over, you're going dark, right? But it's the first match, so obviously they had to cut out certain matches, and they had to get the evacuate the whole building, get the fire department there, all that kind of stuff. And they, we had to do the same thing. We're like, okay, we have to do some unscripted promos. So they put Bonnie Brown and it's, it's tough doing unscripted promos because you're like, all right, well, I guess I'm just going to reiterate, uh, you know, the, the points I was trying to make in my match. And it just, it, it, it's kind of tough because you don't know, they don't give you a cue. Like how long you want me to go? Like I, anything like that. And then obviously we made a joke about it. Like TNA is on fire, you know, like not in a good way. Nobody remembers that. <laughs> no, that, but that is sounds like the most TNA thing that TNA could do is set its own roof on fire. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So these unscripted promos, if you watch them, they're good. You know, you get like Braun Strowman that doesn't usually talk like that, and you you, you could get guys that you don't usually hear or, or just like go off the cuff or whatever. Um, the only thing I don't like about the unscripted promos is because everybody's saying the same thing, like that's what's kind of it's 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 kind of redundant but they did a great job you know just going out there going out like just ad-libbing it and you know just getting through that rain delay i think the rain delay was about 20 minutes long right yeah yeah so i went i watched it i liked it and i thought all the talent did a phenomenal job well with that being said i got the list of matches right here let's uh touch on some of them go through them uh i know and I'll try to re reference our past show off my memory the best I can on how we thought the opening match, Bobby Lashley versus, versus Drew McIntyre. Here's where I think the WWE messed up, guys. I felt like Drew McIntyre should have been the first wrestler we saw on our TV. It shouldn't have been Titus O'Neil and Hulk Hogan doing their thing. I get that they're the hosts, but I really felt like them coming out first took away from from Drew and Bobby Lashley's intro where we're all like, how's the fans going to react? This is the first wrestling match live for WWE. The fans are pumped, 22,000 fans, and the first people they see is Titus O'Neil and Hulk Hogan. 
And well, by the way, they booed Hulk Hogan, which was great. Made me happy. Well, they uh, the whole roster came out there with Vince, you know, first. I mean, so they I saw everybody. But that was great. That classic Vince, it's WrestleMania. And how mm -hmm. many times have we yes. talked about Vince's classic intros were phenomenal. But but for the show itself, because I don't really count that as a show that was part of the, was it the, the, it was just the opening. So I, but <clears throat> I, I, I was happy with the crowd reaction, although I don't think I could really tell too much because I think it was just so exciting and, and watching them come down. Uh, but great match. I was happy with it. I think they did a great job. I, Bobby Lashley won. That's who we wanted to win. Were, I was happy with it. I not too much I can say about the open match, but guys, yeah, I thought the match was 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 great. They you know they gave him almost twenty minutes and uh, um, yeah, I, I, I told you know the story they wanted to tell. And Lashley, I think we all wanted Lashley to win. Uh, nothing against Drew. I'm I'm a fan of Drew. Um, it's just it's it's Lashley's time now. You could tell they're 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 building him up for something. I hope it's a Lesnar thing. Um, but who knows what it is? But yeah, really good match. Yeah, I really enjoyed it myself, and there was no swerve. There was nothing. There was a clean victory, a little distraction from MVP, but, I mean, it was real hard-hitting. It was two people that everybody wanted to see started off anyway, and I was, from that point on, I think the first night was just incredible, so keep going. The tag team turmoil match was next. I This was not a match I was excited about. Nor did I think was good by any stretch of the imagination. It was the second match. And if you watch Jericho's Broken Skull session, which I actually did, we if we got time, we'll talk about that at the end. But it, it, that's all I can say. The, it was a match. All right. Let's go to the next match then. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't have anything to say. Yeah, let's keep going. Yeah. And what I was. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's go back to Mandy. Mandy Rose's slip. <laughs> <laughs> it happens, man. Like I, I it was what? slipped before, yeah, dude. I've slipped getting into the ring on these like slippery pads before I go to grab. <sighs> man, I, I feel for her. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey! When it rains, uh, when it rains on a baseball field, and you try and slow down, and the next thing you know, your ass is wet because you slipped and fell. And I, I, I've done it a few times. And so I felt her agony and mm. I laughed. She she covered it up very well and she she rolled with the punches. You've got to give her credit for that. Boy, but she bit it hard. And it, it that, that did not look like it felt good. No, mm. and it, it it was kind of not off camera but off centered. So they they did an okay job. Like you saw it in the background, but it wasn't the highlight of the camera shot. So yeah, it wasn't Titus O'Neil tripping. Ooh, that was awesome though. <laughs> that one seemed like you meant to do that on purpose. That was great. <laughs> wow. Uh he should have just gotten the warrior award for getting up from that one. That <laughs> all right, let's move on. And what I thought was maybe could have been the match of the night for me. Cesaro takes out Seth Rollins in the singles match. This thing was great. We got a 22, 23 swing. 23. 23 swing out of Cesaro, which I believe that was his record. They made a pretty big deal about it. It was a good-looking match, top to bottom. I'm glad. You know, Cesaro and Sheamus are two guys that deserve an MVP award for, you know, most valuable player that doesn't get any credit whatsoever over the 10-plus years they've been there, it seems like. I think Cesaro a little bit less. But I'm glad to see these two guys finally get their comeuppance, and especially at a WrestleMania. Well, I'm real, I'm real happy to see that Cesaro is finally getting that push that he so much deserved over the years, and he's always been a team player, and so much so where him and Sheamus they became the bar, and Sheamus wound up going in his direction, and he has a belt now. I like to see Cesaro at least get the Intercontinental first, and then. Hey, challenge the um, tribal chief, the head of the table, eventually. I think that's yeah. going to be good stuff. Yeah, I know Cesaro. Uh, you know, I've worked him several times, and he's he's probably one of the best guys I've ever been in the ring with. Like he's just he's so good, so smooth. I, I man, I can't sing his praises enough. I kind of knew they were going to do this spot where I'm like, I bet you 
they're going to do that spot where Seth Rollins goes for the stomp, but he'll kick up with his head and give him the uppercut. I, I just knew it was coming. And so I wasn't surprised when they did that. I'm like, Oh, I'm glad they did that. Um, and you, you could tell him, like Seth it, losing this match is not going to hurt him at all. Like he's he'll rebound easy. Um, Cesaro, if he would have lost this match, it would have been another over nail in his coffin. Yep. So it's good that they're, they're doing something with them. I'm excited to see, you know, if they're going to go the direction of like, you know, intercontinental or us or one of those, or if they're going to be pushing them up to the, the world title picture. What I think, uh, shocked me the most that I walked away from WrestleMania a little bit changed from AJ Styles and, and almost versus the new day, Kofi Kings and Xavier Woods coming in as a champion. And you know what? I didn't hate almost. He didn't, we knew he was green. He came in and we, we knew there wasn't much he could do because of his height other than look menacing, but Holy cow. I left that match going, you know what? He's not giant Gonzalez. No, not uh, even I mean, close. Yeah. Yeah. They, they worked around him uh, really good. Like, you know, he, when he runs, like when he ran corner to corner, look good, you know, he didn't look clunky and stuff like that. So, um, and that's usually the problem with a big guy. It's like, they don't have that uh, agility. Um, the one thing I didn't, I didn't understand. I'm a, I'm not a big fan of, and obviously they did it for a reason. I just don't know why, but I'm not a big fan of putting one foot on the person to pin them. Like I like that, that when you do that, it's like, okay, you didn't struggle for this win. Like who'd you beat? You know, you, it, to me, it doesn't make sense. Uh, here. Yeah. You, you know, you, we're, they're trying to, this was this like his first match. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, they're, they're trying to make a big point of it and they, you know, he's indestructible and all that kind of stuff. It's just, you know, just putting one foot on, he pinned Kofi, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. I mean, he, he like at WrestleMania two years ago, he was like the it was Kofi mania. Yeah. So uh, I don't get that, but I'm sure they did it. For <clears throat> uh, it didn't bother me so much only because they made it look good. They made it look believable. Uh, this guy came out, and I really thought the whole match would be mostly AJ. This guy would come in, throw two punches, and get the pin if they were going to win. Or there was going to be a breakup, and AJ gets hit when you know this guy doesn't want to take his BS anymore and walks out. Neither one of those happened. They made this guy look good, and I think with the one foot, it helped solidify the idea that this guy's a powerhouse to me yeah I, I liked everything about the match because they knew they kept aj away from him the entire time so i was waiting in anticipation to see what this guy could actually do and when he got <clears throat> when he got into the ring i was thinking did you know the great colleague just do the chop stuff but i mean he was very fluid in his moves and Really, and uh, New Day sold everything so well that made him look even more menacing because he didn't smile. He had on that black button-up vest or whatever, and he just looked so dominant. Granted, it was New Day. They sold it, but I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what he's going to be doing in the future with AJ because obviously you had New Day training him. You had AJ, who's obviously behind the scenes with him, and... And WWE, I think, really took their time to make sure that this guy looked as good as advertised. Because what was he? Part of um, the ninja with um, what's oh, that guy? Yeah. Retribute? Oh, no. no ninja no. with uh, Tazawa. 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 Yeah. Yeah. First, he was a ninja with that looking ridiculous. And then he's part of Raw Underground. It's like, okay, this guy has a contract, but they don't know what to do with him yet. Boom. Put him with AJ Styles. Yeah, I have a I have a prediction of how they're gonna do this. They're, they're gonna they're gonna wrestle the New Day again. Um, go back and watch uh, the Colossal Connection. You guys remember that? Oh Andre yeah, the Giant and Haku, and Haku versus Demolition. Right? They 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 destroyed Demolition the exact same way that AJ and Amos destroyed the New Day. And I think what they're gonna do is eventually, you know, they'll they'll run through whoever, but they'll come back for that match and they'll they'll do something where they actually get the best of almost somehow slip on a banana peel, whatever it is. And they'll go over on AJ and get the belts back. Just I'll say it. 
that's my prediction. They're going to book it similar to that storyline. Oh, I like it. I don't have a prediction for that, but uh, to wrap this up, I got to say that uh, phenomenal forearm off, off almost his shoulders. <laughs> Holy cow. I could, I, I did not get enough of that. That right there. Once again, the move I didn't know I needed until I saw it. And that has to be their finisher all the time. Now it probably will. That was, that was amazing. So uh, I definitely a surprise. For me, I was I was I was pleasantly surprised with that Braun Strowman shaped man still cage match. It's kind of what we thought, you know. It was who you know he'd get attacked or someone would surprise show up to help even the odds come in. It was a very good match. Uh, the spot of the night was basically Shane up and, and you had Braun rip that cage open and pull him back in. I thought it was good. We had our, you know, what was crazy Shane going to do? Shane gets thrown off the top of the cage. Look good. Although, and this was the match we we knew what we were going to get out of it. None of us was, I don't think, disappointed in it. No, nope. I thought they did the match, you know. It was predictable of what we thought it was going to be. And they executed. They delivered well. And, um, you know, the right person won. And uh, it, it told the story they wanted to tell. At the beginning of the show, we touched on this match. I don't know how much more we can add to it, but uh, Bad Bunny, Damian Priest versus Miz and John Morrison. You know, if if I had to if I had to put a MVP of the show match, this would be it. This was the match I think we all were ready to poop on and not give a chance to, and just just really not give bad bunny any props and we were ex- i don't want to use the word excited but expected to come in tonight and be like oh yeah we expected this out of bad bunny but wow i mean other than the blush around his cheeks to make him look rosy uh it, you know what they everything they did with bad bunny looked good and believable and what know, about i'm sorry but what about the ring entrance with all those damn bunnies kept coming to the ring for miz and oh, morris yeah. and that was like i'm like damn where are these bunnies coming from and i thought it was bad bunny at first and then uh, hey hey hop hop i'm like oh my god and 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 for it to be more of a comedy thing with with miz and morrison what they're doing with bad bunny and damian priest i mean the match was pretty good i mean when we get the celebrities sometimes we'll, we'll strike gold and sometimes it's like boo boo and and they kept saying that bad bunny moved there and when actually been training so he really took this seriously and it really showed because i mean i'm eating my words because i wasn't a big fan of everything that happened until i saw it on wrestlemania and i was like okay this is good stuff yeah, and I mean, I'm I'm just gonna reiterate, like you know, the, the, all all four of them did a phenomenal job. Uh, you know, Miz and Morrison, the professionals that they are. I mean, they 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 made the bunny, they made Damian Priest, they made, made him look good. So um, I'm glad that the pairing was with them. I'm glad it was a tag match. It didn't end up being that singles match. I don't know, you know, how that would have turned out. Um, maybe they're gonna go there at Backlash. I don't know. Um, but yeah, just to reiterate, they. Everybody in that match did a good job. And, you know, Miz and Morrison are super professional. And, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I'm not sure because I don't remember if it was night one or night two. We got the promo with Triple H and Bad Bunny, the microphone that said, you know, tour 2022, something like that. Yeah. So I, I don't know if that's basically, all right, move on. Thanks for the, the rub or 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 what but i i got the impression after that promo that we're not gonna see bad bunny for a very long time yeah and that's yeah that that's a good point i did i didn't catch that promo right there but i I do remember them saying something about like hey he's gonna start touring in 2022 um and maybe that's just what he's doing while he can't tour (laughs) right he misses the the crowd and stuff you know but but you know what he left the fans wanting more I agree. He, he didn't. He didn't overstay his welcome. Where all of a sudden, the, you know how the wrestling fans are. They'll turn on you on the drop of a hat, and you know he leaves good terms. Have people wanting to see him again, and then they're gonna go watch his um, concert in 2022. 
to end night one, Bill, Bianca Belair, Sasha Banks. And for me, and I think we all said this was going to be the match we were excited for. But if you look on the internet, there were clips, fame, fame recorded clips after the match that showed Sasha Banks sitting on the side crying for Bianca Belair. And that's how you knew that this was a great match. How both of these ladies left it all in the ring. And I I ended night one going, this should have closed it out. It it was the match of the card. And I think we've said it on the show, on the preview show, this was it. This this is the this is the match we expect to be the watermark of night one, and it was. It was beautiful. That's all I'm gonna say. It was beautiful from start to finish. And and I agree. I I remember seeing the clips of Sasha Banks, you know, crying, but she was smiling on her face because she put somebody over who deserved it. And that's just gonna make the women's division that much stronger. Yep. Yeah, they they didn't hold back. They were very physical. Uh, told a great story in the ring. Utilized you know the hair, and oh, just executed yeah. everything. You know, great that the whip of the hair too, and uh. Yeah, I mean, both these ladies went out there and, you know, had the match of their life. So, yeah. And, and, you know, for me on night one, to wrap up night one before we hit the night two here, I I, I love seeing the wrestlers come out and kind of do a little tribute to the fans to get excited. You know, you could see the emotions on their face. A couple of them were or had the kind of tear in the eye. And for that, that really made night one special for me. Agreed. All right. And night two <clears throat> got very rough when WWE, who made several billions of dollars, decided to reuse the same promo package to intro night two as they did with night one. To me, that's the head the scratch because and I still and I still believe this. I still think that this promo package that we saw in night one, night two was almost the exact same promo package from uh, 2020 that they used. I know the voice is the same and the premise of the pirate is the same, but I, I do believe it's the same promo package from 2020. And if so, shame on WWE for, for, for not doing something different for night two. And that, that right there started the disappointment for me on, on and I went in, I saw the same promo package. It took me out. The excitement just wasn't there. I go, you you are the the top of the industry, and you are reusing the same promo package on you know WrestleMania Night Two. To me, was special. It was more special than Night One because WrestleMania Sunday, Sunday is the pay per view night that they're they're holding off the bigger matches for this night, and you started out with the same exact promo package and it just killed it for me well uh consistency so that's, <laughs> that's good um but and they you can't say oh it's, night two is going to be bigger than night one because then everybody on night one that means that uh their matches didn't matter as much as night two so you know i don't think uh w wwe wants to say both these matches both these nights are just as important uh because i could see going forward that they're probably going to make WrestleMania always a two night event. I do you guys like that though? I mean, I don't, I, I didn't I don't mind think. it. And the only reason it is because before it'll be seven hours and it's like, holy shit. E even, even I get a little tired of watching the same program the entire day as excited as I am for WrestleMania, even at 47 years old. You know, my AD, my old ass ADD is kicking in, and it's like, oh, I gotta go do something else. So breaking it off in two nights, it's like, oh, we get two nights of this. This is cool. Yeah. It ain't like I'm doing anything on the weekends anyway. I'm and they could charge double the money, right? They get sure. double the sets of fans in there and stuff. Sure Bigger revenue, and yeah, all the surrounding businesses and all that kind of stuff make money. Man, Super Bowl should be two nights. <laughs> Play the first half one night. <laughs> second half the second night. Well, don't give them that idea because we're going to start to get that. But, uh, well, let's uh, start it off with a disappointing match number one. Somehow, Randy Orton versus The Fiend, they found a way to screw that up. I mean, listen, I love watching Randy Orton wrestle Doink the Clown 
on meth. That's basically what they've turned the fiend in. Like, <laughs> I, I kept thinking of what, and I'll be honest with you, right? I, I'm coming into this, I'm watching what they've done to Bray Wyatt and the fiend, this menacing character that they built up and made us believe in this magic stuff that we're all kind of enjoying. And he's just doing the clown on meth at the end. I mean, I, I don't care what now what's going on. He listen, the fiend should have gone over on Randy Orton and you, then you could have this Alexa bliss thing happen. It's great. But in the realm of wrestling, where we're supposed to believe a certain re- part of it is real. You just told me a story where Randy Orton has beaten the fiend every single time. Well, uh, they he set him on fire the last time. So no, murder, by the way, murder. Yeah. So regardless of all that, yeah. Um, I think they had to set something like, "Hey, this guy, even though he's beatable in a pro wrestling way." So this past year, Ouch. well, this past year, obviously they done a lot of his, uh, you know, the theatric type match where they can, uh, you know, pre produce it, post produce it, all that kind of stuff. Um. Well, they're not going to have that luxury once fans come back. They're, he's going to have to wrestle in the wrestling ring without the, all setting somebody on fire and all that kind of stuff. With, and so they, I think they had to show that, hey, he's beatable in a wrestling match. But how? H- how do we do that? Okay, you know, something to do with Alexa Bliss and, um, yeah. I mean, they they're just they use this as a stepping stone for whatever story they're going to go with next. I believe, and. It was the blow off and you could tell they weren't promoting it a lot. Like in the upcoming weeks and stuff, they were focusing on other matches. I think they were just like, Hey, let's just finish this. I think they probably thought like we booked ourselves in a corner. How do we get out of this? This is what we're going to do. But but, but why did they have another match at WrestleMania? They had one a few years ago. Yeah. When, when, When Bray was the champion. And then how did, how did Bray, or let me say the fiend, Take one RKO and was done. And how many did how many curve stops did he take on um, against Seth Rollins when they first? That's what I mean. I, I think they're they're trying to show like, hey, what's his weakness? Because obviously, you know, they, they gotta. It, they is, gotta it, have is, that. It, is it is it the big V? Is that his weakness? No, it's it's uh, probably something to do with Alexa Bliss and yeah, all the that big V. Of, yeah, <laughs> women. That's his weakness. I, well, I mean, I mean, it is Bray Wyatt's weakness. Well, Braxton. But anyways, um, I I would say his weakness would be a wrestling ring because everything that happened <laughs> is phenomenal. Everything that happened inside of it has not. So I, if you wanna if you wanna be immune to whatever the thing can do, just crawl inside the squirrel circle and you'll be safe. <laughs> All right. Uh, not being safe from bad wrestling is the tag team uh, turmoil match where we had in Natalia and uh, Tamia take on Jackson Baszler. And... All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, moving on. Kevin Owens takes on Sandy Zayn with Logan Paul. Phenomenal match. I mean, there was, we, I think we all expected once again, a great match. They delivered above and beyond. They used Logan Paul sparingly. I don't really know who he was. I know his brother's a tool ox. That's all I really know about the guy. But, <laughs> but I mean, I this is great. I mean, good storytelling in the match. Phenomenal. I, I was happy with it. I was not happy that it ended the way that it did. I thought it could have gone on another five minutes because I was captivated by that match after being disappointed in the first two. So. I knew that this was going to be a good match. It was a great match. I just wanted it to be a little bit longer because Sami Zayn is just, he's nuts. He is absolutely nuts. And he, the way that his character is with his conspiracy with the wrestling and stuff and how he lost and then blaming everything on Logan Paul. And yeah, I loved it, but I wanted five more minutes. That's just me being greedy for seeing a great match. Yeah, I, 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 I think everybody wanted to see them wrestle for a little bit longer. I mean, they had uh, just under ten minutes for the match, um, so I mean, that that's tough. I mean, I was really expecting them to 
you know, since the gloves are kind of off in WWE now, like people are allowed to do pile drivers and all that kind of stuff. And you saw Kevin go for his, his package pile driver, the one he used to use on the indies and ring of honor and stuff like that. I thought he, they were going to actually hit it at one point. And then Sammy used to do the brain buster on the corner. Um, at one point, uh, they were setting up something up in the corner. I'm like, oh, I wonder if he's going to do the brain buster. And then I'm like, nah, the way their feet are positioned, Kevin's going to do is like fisherman turning thing suplex off the top. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed the match. I think they they kind of, I could see them in the back saying like, ah, you know, we're getting cut on time or whatever it is. And they knew they didn't have a lot. So they went out there and they're like, hey, man, we're going to have to do a sprint. This is WrestleMania. We're going to have to pull out all our, you know, big stuff and do all that kind of stuff. We're going to have to cut out this stuff that's not, you know, I, I know that's what they did. And they delivered, though. Yes, they did. Sheamus versus <clears throat> Matt Riddle. I got to be honest, I'm not a Matt Riddle fan, but this match from him, I think it was the best match I've seen out of Matt Riddle. And here's the one thing I'm starting to understand as I get older. Just because I don't like it doesn't mean it's not good. I'm not a fan of the whole marijuana culture outside of Chichi Chong, which I think they're the exception to the rule. But that, Snoop. Snoop, but that humor is over my head, I guess. And I, it kills a lot of it for me because I can't take Matt Riddle serious as a in-ring performer when in real life he's a badass. It's almost like the um, uh, who 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 did the snake? Um, um Santino Morella. Yes, Santino in real life could have whipped all of our asses three times over with his eyes closed at the same time, and not many people know that uh, that's his real background, but. You know, he, he, that wasn't who he played. Matt Riddle, he he could do the same. He's a badass, but they're playing him as this goofy pot stoner guy. And I would love to see Matt Riddle play something <clears throat> kind of serious because I think his character would get over so much more if that's who we saw. But in what we got, Seamus Riddle match uh, blew me away. I enjoyed it. It made me more of a fan of Matt Riddle. And Sheamus went over for the new United States champion. I was happy with it. Yeah, I thought this was like, uh, and this is my pick to be the sleeper match that that, that was good. And it, it it was good. They delivered. They hit each other extremely hard. They both like that type of physicality in the ring. Um, and, you know, Riddle, I, I mean, I, I'm a big fan of his. Like, yeah, I know they, he has that over-the-top stoner character. Um, but you know, in real life, like when I met him, like he's, he's, he's not like a stoner like that, like that, like he's turning that up, but he's kind of like, like Rob Van Dam, just like you chill and like, yeah, whatever, man, like that kind of thing that, that, that's how he is. So they're probably, I know when they were probably like, Hey, what do we do with him? It's like, man, he, he reminds us of, of Van Dam. Let's make it like him. So they probably just told him to turn that up. Um, but you know, in the ring, he'd uh, like when we had the rascals and impact, right they, they were funny they yeah they, they were funny they played stoners outside of the ring they also in the ring played stoners like i remember i had an age in a match where they were all they just like smoked i don't know how much in the tree house or the clubhouse or wherever they had and they were they were they were blowing spots in the ring on, on that was part of the the angle uh because they were so high um so it played into their character in the ring too um uh, but with riddle you know, his character outside of the ring, okay, pothead. Inside the ring, he still does his MMA and his badass, and he does backflips and stuff like that. So the two don't transition together in, in my mind. Like, his character and then his wrestling, not the same. No, and take it from somebody like D-Mac, who en enjoys it from time to time every day. But, um, no, that's a terrible way to portray a pothead, you know. Uh, at least a functioning pothead. He's a functioning. He, I mean, he does his all his stuff, and he obviously uses it to relax or, or do whatever. But to obviously, whoever's doing the writing form does not smoke it thick. <laughs> so if you don't smoke it thick, you don't know how to act. <laughs> all right. Well, well played. Well played. Oh, but you know what? I did like that bro kick when Matt Riddle tried to do yep. that flip up. Oh my god! Oh, that was a yes, nasty move. So wow. I, I seen that one before when uh, who, who was uh, Adam Cole wrestling in NXT? I don't remember, but he hit the super kick from there. Somebody doing a backflip, and that was the finish of the match. I'm trying to remember who he wrestled. 
I, I, I got to give Matt, Matt Riddle credit. When he got busted open from the mouth, he really played it up by spitting it out. I mean. True professional. That That's exactly because you can tell the guy, the professionals from the non who get busted open, the professionals will really try to emphasize the blood and, and play off of it. The, the guys that don't really know, you'll see them just wipe it off and just kind of keep going, you know? <laughs> they don't want to get the mat dirty. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, let's move on from a, a great match to something I'm still kind of confused. I still don't know what a Nigerian drum match is apparently, but neither does Big E because he lost the Intercontinental Champion to Apollo Crews, which <sighs> I, I like it. Uh, I mean, I, I, like I said before, I believe that I wasn't expecting the run in, um, yeah. Sure, they're going somewhere with that. We'll see what happens. Double K though is his name. Yep. Were they getting some new name, Captain Aziz or something? Whatever cor- his name is. Cor- corporal or to ca- cap uh something. And then um, that damn jacket. Yeah. So they're going somewhere with him. I think I think this character, you know, within six months gonna be over. He's gonna be a baby face again. That that's just what I see. So um, yeah, they, I, they were doing some good stuff in the ring. Like I, the, the match itself, even though it was short, it was like, uh, just over five minutes. Uh, they went out there again, just like Sammy and, uh, not to compare it to Sammy and, and KO, but they went out there like, Hey, we don't have a lot of time. Let's freaking, you know, do some crazy bumps and stuff like that. A la WrestleMania. And, uh, I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't think it was a bad match in before the, do you jump in? Let me let me ask you guys a question because it's going to sound stupid coming from a guy that knows wrestling is wrestling, right? Uh, Kofi Kingston for the longest time, uh, Jamaican had a Jamaican accent, right? Is is Apollo Cruz Nigerian or is this a gimmick they gave him? Because I'm still trying to figure out. Because I swear, in all the Apollo Cruz interviews I remember, he didn't have a Nigerian accent, did he? No, no. We might, have, have, we might have to Google him. Yeah. All right. I just want to make sure I wasn't missing something as, as a guy that's supposed to talk wrestling for, for somewhat of a living. <laughs> well, Nikita Koloff was really Russian. Ah, see. <laughs> so. Yes. But no, I just wanted to make sure because it, it always makes me go, uh, oh, when they give a guy a gimmick like this, right? Whether it is. Kofi being Jamaican or this or that, which it could be part of their heritage or background, but I don't know if, if, you know, the, the accent comes out of nowhere and all of a sudden, you know, I'm supposed to believe Apollo Cruz has this rich Nigerian heritage, which I don't remember them ever bringing up throughout any of his career in wrestling. No, I, they'll, they'll, they'll make something up. I mean, for, for, for instance, I'm not really Canadian. I just been talking with this accent for like 20 <laughs> years. Uh, so yeah. All right. Uh, Ray Rip, Rhea Ripley, the Rhea, 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 me. Uh, singles match. Hold on, the- hold on. I didn't even, I didn't even say anything about the match. Oh, I'm sorry. I totally forgot. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I think they're gonna elevate um, Big E. After this, he he's gonna be out of intercontinental and move up to the main event. Yeah, I could see that. I I agree with you on that. Yep. Or they're gonna reunite him with uh, New Day. Yeah, that was nice at WrestleMania that they did that. That was cool. All of them mm-hmm. lost in WrestleMania. How about that? That was nice of them to do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Rhea Ripley, the feature. Rhea. I, I'm gonna call her Rhea. She gonna whoop your ass when she sees yeah. you in person. Good on site. <laughs> good, good. That means I'm doing something right. If if a she knows who I am, b I'm ever in the same room with her. Okay, there's, I think she whips your ass. Yes, <laughs> all good things for you, right, Dennis? There's a lot of things that have to fall into place for that to happen, and I can't wait for it to, to actually start falling my way. Then, all right. So, uh, come on, universe, give it to me. Uh, but Ripley defeats Oscar. Great match. I'm happy with it. Yeah, the uh, match was really good. Asuka, man, she's just, oh, man, I, I think she's n- not even like a female wrestler, but man, man female, whatever. She's, I think she's one of the best in the world um, in the top. I mean, she could probably wrestle circles around like most men or maybe if not all. 
she's just she's great. She can make anybody look like a star. Uh, Ripley, you know, she obviously they're going for her, making her a star. She held her own. Um, Asuka was right opponent to get her over for uh, you know the Raw Women's Championship. Um, it was it was a solid match. I just. I really don't want, and I think maybe one of us said this before, and I agree with it. Uh, I don't want Asuka to be that person that just is that stepping stone to the next level. You know, like she's just always, you know, oh, we're elevating this person. Let's have Asuka get a good match out of her and elevate her instead. Kind of uh, like the Banks is. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say Sasha's like that. Like Asuka's more like, uh, well, hang on, well, hang on now. Think about this. Sasha Banks is what this is the first year she has successfully defended the championship. She's 0 and 6 in WrestleManias. Yeah. But I, uh, yeah. She the yeah. anti Undertaker. <laughs> I'm just I'm just throwing it out there. She I think before 2020, she was like 0 and 10 or 0 and 5 or something like that in title defenses. After winning a championship, so yeah, she loses it immediately. Her first title defense, yeah, except with the exception of this last one. So, wouldn't that say that she's a stepping stone then? Possibly, I feel like Oscar's a little bit more of a stepping stone. Um, maybe they're they're the stepping stone for their respective brands. Well, I mean, I mean, because Oscar wasn't really in any major feud since she got the belt, you know. And it's like sometimes she wouldn't even be on Raw, and and now they had that quick bill with Rhea Ripley coming to to Raw and challenging Oscar for the belt, and then winning it. I think it was all in the cards. But Oscar, shit, she like you just said, she's amazing, and to make Rhea Ripley look even better now than what she did a few years ago when when they had this uh, what was that the uh, Survivor Series when. When NXT got over on Raw and SmackDown, and Rhea Ripley was the main reason, and then she loses to Charlotte Flair, and then the whole wins just, yeah. it just kind of just went away from it. So I'm glad that they rebuilt Rhea Ripley back to, you know, where she is now. Absolutely, yep. I I totally agree. Good show, uh, good match. I wasn't disappointed one bit. Close out night two that I was disappointed in, guys. And I don't know how I we haven't talked about this. I don't know how you feel. I was severely dis I'm glad Roman Reigns retained, but I was severely disappointed in the Bryant Edge Roman Reigns match. It just seemed like something was off. It was a little lackluster. Even the one cool spot that they had, right? For me, the one cool spot where they had Bryant and Edge both had Roman in the submission hold. For me, they found a way to dick it up. I mean, the I, you know, I'm sitting there watching it, and they're both yelling at each other, to "Let go!" Like, what? Why? And then they go into the headbutts. It just, I don't know if I'm just misfiring on Edge or what, but it just nothing connected with me in this match. See, and that was the opposite. I, I loved everything about it because I like when. It looked like Roman Reigns was about to tap out. <clears throat> then he got a surge of energy. Edge and Brian were going back and forth with each other. And then Jey Uso came in, did what he had to do. But then when Roman Reigns double pinned both of them, like you will see in the freaking, I, I, I was just like, wow. You know, to pin both of them and for both of them to agree to have Roman Reigns pin him like that. I mean, that's showing them that they really believe in Roman and they really believe that, that he's going to be like the, he's going to be the guy. Cause you know, he's a heel. People were booing. Consider I was cheering actually, because I'm actually a Roman Reigns fan now that he's a heel. But to me, that I, I just like that action packed stuff. And that pin was the seal of approval. So uh, technically, Edge pinned Daniel Bryan, right? Oh, he was on top. Oh, shit. <laughs> Ew, oh, is this what we're going to see on SmackDown? No, I don't know. Like, I, so they, they, I liked, they didn't do the stack like this, right? Like where Edge's shoulders were on Daniel Bryan. They made sure Edge's shoulders were down on the mat. So, okay. 
but still like would that pin count like i don't i have to look at the rule book i'll have to pull that out when we're done hmm. um yeah i i i, I, I like the match um i i didn't like i mean obviously i know why they did it but i thought if those guys left out like the chairs and all that kind of stuff like i understand they had to do that to get to the story they wanted to tell and you know the double pin and all that kind of stuff um i would just like to see them like instead of that last the chairs for the last four minutes or whatever it was i would have just liked them to you know just give her i guess you could say just go out there and have that WrestleMania match without the, no, without the weapon. I, 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 Jey Uso kind of took me out of it too. I'll be honest. Mm -hmm. I really, I kind of what you said. I really want to see the three go and whoever they decided was the best man. And I would have been happy with, but it just felt forced. Maybe I don't know. How, I can't put words to how I felt during this match. Dimitri, you're right though. That double pin was phenomenal might have been top three moments of the night. That was a true WrestleMania moment right there. I'll give them that. Yeah, I don't know how they're going to... I mean, obvious. you just, you just pin both your competitors. I mean, I don't know if that's... I'm trying to think. I don't know if that's really happened, but like, where do they go from here now? I don't know. I mean, if, As the Rollins continue to fight with Randy Orton? I <laughs> It, it was, <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, with that being said, that's the two nights of WrestleMania. I'm I'm happy with it. And then, uh, oh, did you guys did you guys watch the Broken Skull sessions with uh, Chris Jericho? Yeah, yeah, I, I didn't. I mean, it, we we can talk about that like more in depth next time. But right. yeah, I, I really, it was worth it. And I was shocked at how much leeway they had to talk about AEW on WWE networking. So. There's a lot of philosophies and reasons I think they let them do it. So we'll get into it a little bit later. And uh, I'll watch it. Yes, please do, because it was really good. I mean, a lot of the stuff you kind of knew and you heard, some of the stuff you didn't, it was very edu educational and it was two hours long. Whoa. Yeah, it, it was it was really long. And then uh, I, I actually watched the replay, so I don't know how heavily edited it was. I don't know if they were supposed to put commercials when they went to the black. I don't know. So, it not, yeah, I, it wasn't live, which was nice, but at two hours long, well worth it. Get some popcorn, sit back, uh, do whatever you do, and demac it up, but enjoy because it's good. I will say that. And overall, I was, I was happy with uh, WrestleMania overall. I know we all were not very excited about it and didn't feel the, the WrestleMania hype as the last few years, but uh, now that it's over. Do you guys, how do you guys feel now that it's over? Did you, did you enjoy it more than you thought you would? Or was it where you thought you should be? I enjoyed it a lot better because of the fans. We watched WrestleMania 36 two nights. There, it was in a, a empty studio. And we were watching premium matches in an empty studio. This year, we had Raymond James Stadium. We had fans cheering, booing, and we had the rain delay, and we had two nights. It was exciting, and that's why WWE is always on top. But that's why the other other organizations, they, they bring it too, because when WWE brings it, it forces other organizations to bring it as well, and overall makes wrestling a great product to watch. Yeah, I, I I enjoyed like you said, Dimitri, like last year's WrestleMania did not feel like WrestleMania. I'm kind of glad they did like the the boneyard match, like the theatrical match, the you know, produced match, because that's what kind of saved it. It made it seem a little bit different than what you know, wrestling in an empty arena. Uh, but yeah, having the fans back and everything you just said, like yeah, WrestleMania never feels like the best pay-per-view to me ever like when you when you watch it it's just but the excitement that the talent has and they go out there and they want to have the best match and stuff like that and sometimes since it's wrestlemania our expectations are really high like this is going to be the best pay-per-view ever and like i've said before sometimes when our expectations are high you know it's hard to exceed those expectations and then that's why sometimes like other pay-per-views seems like man this pay-per-view is really good i wasn't expecting it to be this good um but at the end of the night 
both nights. It was WrestleMania. Um, and, you know, Backlash is next, I guess. Yeah, um, back, <laughs> back to the Thunderdome. Back to Mania not- Backlash, they're calling it, I think. Is that what they're calling it? I guess. Yeah, great. So, yep, uh, there we go. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the show as much as we did. Uh, we'll get back to our guests and our shenanigans this weekend. We're still trying to, you know, work up who we're going to have on and whatnot. We're going to leave it as a surprise and kayfabe because we don't know yet. So uh, <laughs> with that being said, don't forget, head over to ProWrestlingTees.com. You can search Wrestling Perspective, buy a shirt, support the show. We've got four shirts up now. Hopefully we'll have a couple more come in. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you've ever stole the Canadian destroyer, there's now a shirt for you to wear it. So <laughs> I like that, by the way, that's my favorite shirt, Pete. Uh, that's, uh, that's my favorite shirt too, Dennis. Thank you. Liar. <laughs> oh, liar. And, and so hopefully you guys go buy a shirt. Uh, listen, Dimitri, where can people find you? Well, on Instagram, what is it? Dimitri the meat hook. Or is it to me? I don't know what it is, but you can find me at Camarillo right. High School baseball field. We we'll play tomorrow. All right, Jason Kendall, by the way. I don't know what my Twitter is. I can't even log in. Hey, by the way, what's your sca- what's your what's your record right now? How are things going with it? Uh, you know what? It's going a lot better. We're six and four now, two and oh in league. We have another league game tomorrow. And uh, we have senior day on Saturday. Then we have a non-league game on Monday. And yeah. We're in the full swing of things. I'm learning who can do what. And now that we're in league, we're playing on um, running through everybody. Oh, love it. Uh, Pete? Uh, you can find where's my what? What's my Twitter? Um, oh, 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 really? <laughs> Just, really? <laughs> bad joke. Um, yeah, Twitter. Better than you, Pete. Cut him some black. I know. Uh, <laughs> Twitter and Instagram at uh, IPD Williams. All right. Hey, you can follow me at Undisputed DPF on Twitter, uh, Wrestling Perspective Pod on Instagram, WP underscore pod on Twitter. Go over to Pro Wrestling Tees, buy, search Wrestling Perspective. I think we have two shirts. It's all mixed up, but search Wrestling Perspective, buy a shirt, go over to Collar and Elbow, use the promo code WPP, get a small little discount, buy our Collar and Elbow brand shirt, buy things. That's all. How about that? Good. Ah, thanks. All right, guys. Well, this is uh for and by the way, wrestling perspective on YouTube. Make sure you go over, subscribe, you comment on the shows. Hopefully, we'll be doing more. We almost did this show live, but maybe hopefully we'll do more live shows because I had fun doing that, guys. So yeah, I did too. All right. So if if you subscribe over there, more subscribers, the more we'll do it. You can email us if you look at the bottom of the scroll. Our email address is there. We want to look forward to hearing from you. More guests. Guys, let's call it a night. Hour and 24 minutes. I'm done. I'm done talking to you guys. So uh, enjoy. Peace out. Good night, everybody.